Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. If you pay much attention to financial news, you may have noticed some recent dramatic headlines warning of an upcoming recession. What triggered the warnings was something called the inverted yield curve. To explain that term, it helps to understand bond markets. When you invest in bonds, you are essentially loaning money to the bond issuer. You will receive a higher interest rate on long-term bonds than short-term bonds. So you receive a higher interest rate if you're loaning for 30 years than if you're loaning for 10. You receive a higher interest rate if you're loaning for 10 than if you're loaning for one year. I think that makes intuitive sense since the long-term bonds tie up your funds for a longer period of time. The yield curve is a line on a graph that shows the interest rates on bonds of various term lengths from three months to 30 years. <clears throat> when the short-term bonds offer higher yields than the long-term bonds, then this is a yield curve inversion. So usually the short term are lower and the long term are higher. But when the short term are higher than the long term rates, you have an inverted yield curve. Based on trends over the past 50 or so decades, an inverted uh, curve is considered to indicate that a recession's on the way. There's been such an inversion before in each of the last seven recessions. As a warning signal, however, an inverted yield curve isn't all that reliable. For one thing, two different historic inversions, one in 1966 and one in 1998, were not followed by recessions. The one in 98 was largely flat. Similarly, the current inversion was pretty slight. The interest rate on a three-month treasury note was higher than on a 10-year bond by 0.022%. Um, that's not a whole lot. In addition, uh, there's no way to predict the timing of a recession based on an inverted yield curve. Previous ones have occurred at widely varying times, meaning there's no way to create reliable investment strategies in response. Another important factor to keep in mind is that, as pointed out by Simon Moore and Forbes, an inverted yield curve implies a 25 to 30 percent probability of a recession on a 12-month view. Now, 25 to 30 percent is hardly high odds of predicting an imminent threat. It means there's still roughly twice the likelihood of no recession within the next year as there is of a recession occurring in that time. In addition, we're not currently experiencing several other conditions that can signal an approaching recession. These are rapid GDP growth, not happening, rising unemployment, not happening, and spikes in interest rates. We're still in a long period of slow growth. Unemployment remains low, the Federal Reserve recently announced that it was not raising interest rates. So uh, the announcement also indicated that rates are unlikely to increase over the coming year. Well, does all that mean that you should assume we're not going to see a recession anytime soon? Not necessarily. One thing we can assume is that the next recession will come. We just don't have any way to accurately predict when it might show up. So rather than worrying about such predictions, investors can instead choose to focus on maintaining diversified portfolios and taking long-term views. 
Ironically, one scenario that might make a recession more likely is a large number of investors reacting with fear to headlines that predict one. When people change their investing and spending behavior in anticipation of a recession, they increase the probability of one occurring sooner rather than later. So according to Simon Moore, the markets are capable of learning too. And there is some evidence that recessions are self-fulfilling, meaning that if enough decision makers expect a recession, they may then take the very actions, such as temporarily cutting back on spending, that causes a recession to happen. As always, it's a good idea for ordinary investors not to pay too much attention when economists, investment analysts, and other number crunching gurus get excited about portents and predictions. Thanks for listening.